day. Welcome to OML's channel. We have had a lot of requests for shipping out of China to Jamaica. So we decided to do another one, which is a lot more informative and a lot more detailed than the previous one. Um, we have not done a video for some time now because we really are shippers, we are not YouTubers. However, due to popular demand, we have done this one and we are hoping that it will be informative for you. If you find this kind of content useful, you can subscribe, you can share with somebody else who will also find it informative. All right, so let's start. All right, we all know that shipping from China has become more or less the way to go for most businesses that has been called the factory of the world. So many people ship out of China. There are a lot of pitfalls. There are a lot of things that happen behind the scenes that you may not be aware of. This video is really meant to address some of those issues, right? All right, one of the main issues that we may find is that people maybe not be realistic in their expectations and they believe that because the things out of China are cheap, it also means that the shipping is cheap. No, that's not the case. We have seen people importing or trying to import a pair of shoes out of China and expecting to spend 600, 700 Jamaican dollars for the shipping. That just does not happen, right? You have to be realistic. It takes, it's a good distance from Jamaica and there's a lot involved in the shipping process from China through to Jamaica. So it cannot be that you're expecting to spend $600, $700 Jamaica dollar for that shipping, right? Shipping is based on the weight and the volume depending on whether it's air or sea. And there's no rela relation to the actual cost of the item. All right. Some people, or most people, get fixated on Costs per CBM. They will call us. They will ask, What's the cost per CBM? Well, I'll tell you something. It doesn't stop there. The cost per CBM is just the beginning. There are a lot of other charges which are there, which you have to deal with. Um, I will tell you that most of the freight powders out of China. They will just give you a cost per CBM. And you will not expect that there will be other charges. But there are many other charges which they will not necessarily tell you. And you will just see those fees or those charges when the item gets to Jamaica. I will just show you um, a schedule of charges from one of the major shippers out of China. I won't say which one. And let us just look. Local charges. If you're shipping out of Shenzhen, local charges. $6.15 per CBM. There's a documentation fee. There is a customs clearance fee in China to process the custom documentation. There is a gate charge at the port that you will have to pay. Then these now are some of the major charges that you'll have to contend with. When an item gets to Jamaica, this is when you will face a major part of the charges. And we're looking at some in-transit fees of another 120 per CBM. You have a stripping fee of $45 per CBM. You have wharfage, $5 per CBM. Agency fees, USD, $18 per CBM. You have a port service fee, $25 per CBM. You have a handling charge. You have a THC of another $55 per CBM. You have a CISF of $55 per CBM. CBM sorry. We'll come back to this charge. A PSS fee of another $15 per CBM. Now, when you engage with 
ah, freight forwarder in China. They do not tell you this. They will just tell you the ocean freight of, let's say, $100 per CBM, and you're expecting to pay $100 if it's one CBM. However, these are some fees that are going to be seen once the item gets to Jamaica. We took a look at CISS, FSM, right? We couldn't find, well, the shipping line couldn't tell us what it was. So we do a Google search and this is what it says. This is a hidden cost that can arise when goods are shipped using cost and freight or CIO shipping terms. It's not easy to pin down exactly what it is paying for or who it's going to, but it can arise when a shipper pays a very low amount of freight or freight, sorry, at origin. That is what I mentioned earlier. So they will give you these low fees at the up front, at the front end, and then you will see these major charges at the back end when the item gets to Jamaica. So be careful. So when you receive that cost per CBM from that forwarder or that vendor in China, in China, just ask them, what are my destination fees? What do I expect to see when the item gets to Jamaica? Right? Good. Next. It's always better to consolidate your cargo than to ship a container. We have seen cases where a vendor will have, let's say, 37 CBM, right? A 12 foot container holds 20, 32 CBM, sorry. Right? So they will automatically engage a 40 foot container. Now, if they engage a 40 foot container to ship on your behalf, 37 CBM, you will find that you will have to engage with all of those charges attendant to that container. So all the stripping fees, all the port fees will be yours. Your best option is to have it consolidated with another forwarder, right? Have it delivered to a warehouse, it could be ours, it could be somebody else's. And you consolidate that cargo, then you have then you now um, share the charges for that container. So instead of you standing the entire cost of the container, you may just pay um, 30% depending on the volume of your cargo. Right, so it's always better to consolidate your cargo. Alright, the next thing that you may not consider is that not all vendors in China have an export permit. Right? Um, it can be shipped, however, it will cost you more if that vendor does not have an export permit because it will be shipped under what in China is called special arrangement, right? And it will cost you a few dollars more to ship that item from that particular vendor. So always find out when you're engaging the vendor if they have an export permit. All right, counterfeit brand or knockoffs, that is a no-no. The customs officials in China will detain the item, as well as there's a possibility that Jamaica customs will also confiscate those items. So be careful of knockoff or counterfeit brands. All right, your liquids, your powders, your batteries, these are considered hazardous items by the shipping lines. So they will request an MSDS as well as a DGM certificate. Most vendors will have the MSDS material safety data sheet. They will not, as a rule, have a DGM. Most do not have that. Right? So request that before you engage with that vendor once your item is classified as uh, as adults. All right. It's a norm to expect that air freight is actually more expensive than sea freight. But I will tell you that's not always the case. It does depend on your particular shipment, the weight, as well as the volume of that cargo. Sea freight is actually more expensive sometimes than air freight um, because sea freight comes with um, certain charges that you do not see when you ship by air. However, it is worth it to note 
that with air freight, your three days to clear your items are a lot shorter. So if your item were to come on a Friday and you're advised of it, chances are by Monday you're ready to clear that items. You would have um, used up your free period and there will be some additional storage fees. There's always more import very important sorry, to clear air shipments quickly. Right? Apart from that, um, as I said, it is not always more expensive than sea freight. At times, it can be cheaper. Alright, the next thing a lot of people do not consider is the terms of trade. Right? The Inca terms. Alright, what that means? It means who undertakes um, the various risks involved in moving the cargo. Once you buy that cargo, moving that cargo from the factory to the, um, the um, port. If it's X Works, you'll find that you will have to undertake one, the transportation, two, um, you have to undertake the risk involved. So if something were to happen, moving from the factory to the port or to the warehouse that the item will be shipped from, you are responsible for that. If, however, if it is FOB, you find that the vendor will undertake arranging transportation as well as you will undertake the risk involved. You will also, chances are, depending on the arrangement, you will also pay port fees and so on for, for, for you. So, you will then only have to deal with your ocean freight and your other charges at destination. Alright, um, time sensitive cargo. Um, some people buy stuff, let's say they buy, they want some items for December sale in Christmas and they are looking to buy it in late November. I've never seen a shipping line that has been on time. They are always, always, always late. So when they give you an estimated time of arrival, take it that they will be seven days, 10 days late. So put that in your preparation. All right, now we look at some of the items you'll have to deal with when the cargo gets to Jamaica and that is your invoice. It's critically important that you have a proper invoice. Alibaba has some little, um, I don't know what they call it, but I guess they call it an invoice, but it's not legible most times. And we, as a shipping line or the agent, we, have, we as the agent, sorry, you have to print that and submit that to customs when we are making your declaration. And it usually can't be seen. So when they give you something like that, tell them no, prepare for me a proper commercial invoice. All right, a lot of times we see people tendering invoice saying performer invoice. That's not really a true invoice. It's actually a statement that look, I plan to invoice you later or they prepared, prepare that performer invoice so you can make your initial payment. Ask them to give you a commercial invoice. It should say commercial invoice or just invoice, right? That is what is accepted by customs. You ensure that your item name um, is on it. Oftentimes we'll see something like a serial number or a descriptive number or an image. No, if it is a headphone, it has to say headphone, it's a battery, has to say lithium ion battery. It cannot say 51.2 volts, 10 kilowatt hour. What is that? 
customs won't know what that is. We need to know that it's actually a lithium ion battery. As a matter of fact, lithium ion batteries are now duty free as well as GCT exempt. So, if you want to uh, access those concessions, you need to specify, you have the, the vendor specify on the invoice that this is actually a lithium ion battery. And also, your, the, the invoice must be in English. It has to be in English, it cannot be in Chinese hieroglyphics. Alright, customs as a rule is generally very suspicious of items out of Asia, Japan, China, I don't know where else. So they will tend to ask for your proof of payment. Just to verify that what you said you paid for the item, that's what you actually paid. So ensure that you have it close by, but you can present it when they ask. All right, in shipping items to Jamaica, there are some items which are classified as restricted items. And for those, you need a import permit. If your item gets to Jamaica without that import permit, you will be in breach of the Customs Act. So it's important that you ensure that you get your permit before the item leaves China. Um, things like uh, ATVs, um, lawnmowers that you can ride on. These things require a permit. Many people would not know that. We have seen people importing five ATVs and they didn't know that. Look, an ATV is classified as a vehicle. You need a permit for it. You are allowed one vehicle every three years. Right? It is classified as a vehicle. So, if you are buying five, you would have to have a dealer's license in order to import more than one at any one instance. Right, so make sure you check if there's a need for permit. You can ask your broker, you can call us, you can ask us. All right, find out which port your items will be going to. There are some ports which are notorious for being very slow in getting your container stripped. And the longer time it takes to strip, it's the more the mortgage charges you will pay. Depending on the shipping line, the mortgage charges can range from 70 up to 200, 300 dollars per day, and that's US dollars. So when your, 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 your cargo is not stripped out of the container in a timely fashion and sits in the container for whatever reason, after the three days have passed, which Three days can vary between seven up to as much as ten days, depending on the carrier. You start paying seventy to two hundred to three hundred dollars every day that it sits in your account. So watch out for that. All right. If importing as a business, you will need your TCs, tax compliance certificates. If not. Um, I think that is called, I think that is called uplift. It's an addition to your CIF value. It will be applied to your items. And you find that your duties and your taxes will be more than if you had that thesis. All right, let's have a little, a quick look at um, what we call duties. We in Jamaica, we tend to use the word duties very loosely. It is, however, a combination of taxes, levies, and fees. Right? So you have the import duties, which the rate is based on the item itself. You have your environmental levy, you have your standard compliance fee, you have your customs and administrative fee, you have your GCT. All of that is added to the cost, insurance, and freight value of your items. Right? So it's not just a one time charge or a one tax. It's a multiplicity of levies and fees and taxes. 
All right. If you are part of any one of these uh, sectors, you can access various concessions. Um, due to concessions, the manufacturing industry, the hotel and tourism industry, the creative industry, agriculture. There is one more I remember exactly right now. I will be able to access some concessions. 